Good morning, evening, or afternoon, everybody. It's Kago coming at you with another video. So today, despite, you know, all the guides I have made in Classic WoW and so on, I have actually never talked about this subject. I don't know how it got by, but I'm going to be talking about the best classes for gold farming. Just sort of like, I haven't made a tier list, but I'm going to list them off in what I think is the best to the worst. And sort of would love to hear what you guys have to say about that and your thoughts on it um yeah i'm just kind of surprised that i have never done this um it seems like an easy one and i hope you guys enjoy but before we get into the video be sure to like comment and subscribe everything you guys do helps my channel grow helps me get discovered and helps me help as many people as possible which is the entire point of my channel so without further ado let's get into the video so the first classes that we are going to talk about are hunter and mage so they're both they go back and forth honestly on what is best it really just depends on the level and where the meta is in the game if we were talking classic i would have said mage all the way hunter would have definitely been second but here in sod because of phasal content being locked at 25 40 50 and then 60 i gotta give it to hunters because hunters are able to do the stuff while it is current and let me just show you here real quick this is shortly after the server has gone up, and as you can see, you got tons of hunters in here. We got 37 people in here. Mages are kind of doing stuff. I'd imagine these warlocks, I don't really know what they're doing. They could probably do it as well, but it's probably nowhere near as good as a hunter. The mages are probably getting their quest, or mages can do it. It's just, once again, nowhere near as good as hunter. But as you can see, there are tons of 40 hunters, and these three people are probably getting boosted. And this is less than an hour after the server has conned back up and so hunters are just in there farming oldaman i know three hunters in my guild that have farmed over a thousand to two thousand gold in there and they've just been doing oldaman like crazy um since the uh phase two is launched and they've really got it down pat so i'll definitely be hitting them up for some advice when i start farming it and teaching you guys how to do the oldaman farm but that is why hunters are number one right now. Then mages, they can do most of the things hunters can do. They just can't do it as well or as efficient. And they can kind of just get RNG to, to where like they get slowed or resist or something. And mages can die. So it's just hunters just have that edge right now. As well as open world farming. Hunters can kill level 45 to 50 mobs. Whereas a mage can do it. But it, it's going to be a lot slower and they're going to struggle with that but that is why i have hunter at one mage at two next is super niche but warlock summoning i have that at number three mainly because it requires three accounts so you have to be paying for three subs as well as you have to deal with competition as well as you can um you know you gotta farm soul shards like crazy as well so there is some sort of leveling requirement to it and you have to go get the shards um, in order to summon people to locations. So both of those things can be a little obnoxious for sort of summoning, but you can make really decent gold. I'm a one account Andy, so I have n I don't I've never tested it to see how much I can make. I just have seen guildies do it and know that they can make a pretty penny doing it. As well as all the times that I have just bought a summon to go places and get stuff done. I have done that quite a lot just because it saves a lot of time and generally is worth it. Then f next, we're going to go into gathering, whether you're fishing, herbing, mining. Um, all of these are really great to be on a druid, a shaman, and priest. And that is because of two things. They have travel forms as well as they have water walking. So priests and shaman get flat out water walking druid gets aquatic form which is the same as just walking on the water um, at normal speed and then druids also get uh, travel form so they don't have to get out of travel form to pick herbs so it could be really op S shamans get ghost wolf same thing so all three of those are amazing gatherer tunes so i have them all equal right now um, mounts kind of equalize sort of those benefits, but in phase one, as well as phase two, I honestly haven't bought my mount on my shaman or druid because they have those travel forms and 
it's not really I don't really go that far so I don't really see too big of a gain with them at this time for the 60% mounts maybe if I'm out there gathering a lot of herbs I'll consider buying an epic mount on one of those characters but those are really good uh, just sort of quality of life things if you are out there actually farming stuff the next we have rogue rogues have the slight advantage over warrior because rogues can have some really unique pickpocketing farms as well as lock box opening um so like if you have a hunter that is just blasting or mage and you're farming a lot of stuff you'll get a ton of lock boxes and then you can have your rogue open all those lock boxes it's super nice instead of having to find someone you can just send them all over and lock boxes can contain some very nice greens or blues or even epics so and then there are a few pickpocking farms but they're not out yet we'll see those in phase three and later on and then finally warrior warrior is just not as good at any of these things as any of the other classes um while warriors do incredible dps they'll never be able to out farm sort of a hunter or mage as well as they just you know they got nothing going for them unfortunately they get no unique things i don't really know of any warrior solo farm things that only a warrior can do um, I think a hunter outclasses it in every regard towards that. So, anyway, guys, that is sort of my class breakdown. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, Paladin also, for you Alliance players, is pretty much the equivalent to Warrior. I don't know too many Paladin farms. There are some things Paladins can do with ZF and stuff, but all the other classes can do those. So, I think a anything a Paladin can do, a Mage can also do because they play very similar with Consecration and just sort of kiting. So that's why I don't really have Paladin all the way up top there, but I'd probably put Paladin around Warrior as well, probably above it if you are an Alliance player. But that is all for the entire list. Let me know what you guys think. If you think I missed anything, if you think anything ranks higher or lower, I would love to hear what you guys have to say about this. But until next time, I'll see you later. Have a great day. Bye-bye. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so, so much for watching. It truly means a lot to me. If you happen to find anyone that you know would also benefit from watching this video, please, please, please share it with them. It helps me out a ton and allows me to keep doing what I love every single day. And that is gaming and sort of helping people any way that I can. So finally, thank you so much and I hope you have a fantastic day. Goodbye.